What? Welcome to a brand new episode of Discovering Doctor Who. Uh, you might have just saw my little outburst there right before, and that was actually a segment I recorded earlier, right after I finished watching uh, these two episodes, which are uh, Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. So um, that's actually is going to contain my synopsis or my feelings on the, these two episodes overall. I'm going to tack that on at the end after a uh, quote, uh, quotes actually of the episodes. So, uh, yeah, let's get right into it, starting with the first, uh, my first, uh, best part of the episodes. Yeah, that came out wrong. Anyway, the first, uh, uh, favorite part of the episode was actually the ghosts themselves. And, um, overall, you know, they weren't, like, the ghosts themselves were just kind of strange, not really scary or weird particularly, but I just like the way they were presented. The graphics around them just made them seem very surreal, almost uh, computerized in nature, wink wink. Um, but yeah, that's that was just part of the episode that I really liked, and it had this just bit of mystery around it that was unfortunately kind of ruined a little bit later on, but I'll get back, I'll get to that later. The second best part of this episode was actually getting to see Torchwood, finally. Now, I haven't actually watched the show Torchwood, and I think it takes place um, during this season. I could be wrong on that. But, yeah, the uh, just getting to see the inside of Torchwood, and it, you know, it, it wasn't that amazing, I guess, but actually getting to see the insides of it, get, getting to meet and see some of the people that have to do with the Torchwood Institute, I just thought that was really interesting. Now, the third best part of this episode, Mickey! Mickey's back! Or was back, or was back for a little while. <laughs> totally didn't expect that. I just thought, you know, getting to see him was really cool, and, uh, you know, well, getting to see some of the other characters that had appeared previously as well. Just, that was a really good surprise, and I really liked that, because, hey, Mickey's a badass now. Go, dude. <laughs> All right, now the fourth best part of this episode would have to be when the Cybermen invade, and they have lasers! It's not just like last time where it's just like they stick their hand out and they grab you and blah, dead. They have lasers! They're now like infinitely more terrifying as, as bad guys in the show. But now that they're gone, maybe not so much, but it's Doctor Who, so they'll be back at some point and, oh my God, they got freaking lasers! <laughs> All right, now the f fifth, yeah, the fifth best part of this episode, uh, these episodes, was actually at the end of the first episode, Army of Ghosts. The Daleks are back? The freaking Daleks, really? <laughs> it just came out of nowhere. I mean, I know that I'm sure that they're gonna be around a lot more throughout the next few seasons, but I completely did not expect more Daleks to appear. Just come out of nowhere, really. I. You're just flabbergasted by that still. I really like how it was brought in and just all of a sudden the reveal, EXTERMINATE! And at the end of the episode I was just like, What? Really? Uh, I might have sounded kind of sarcastic right then, but I wasn't at all. I was just completely stunned at seeing them. I, that was really cool! Alright, and now the sixth best, best part. There's quite a few really good parts of this epi these episodes, let me just say that. Now the sixth best part of these episodes. Ah, my phone! La la la, sorry. Now the sixth best part of these two episodes would actually have to be the verbal battles between the Daleks and the Cybermen. Now the actual battle, like little war going on between the two species was interesting as well, but the verb, the verbal confrontations were just so sassy. <laughs> and actually, uh, one of them is one of like my favorite quotes of uh, these two episodes, and I'll, I'll mention that later. But it was it was hilarious to just see that back and forth and the way that the two creatures or species interacted with each other. It was just great. I absolutely love that aspect of the second episode. Yeah, the second episode. Now, the seventh best part 
of these episodes would be um, the millions of Daleks that escape from the Ark. Oh my god, okay. Now, we have the huge 5 million Cybermen army marching around the planet. Now, they're intimidating enough to begin with. I mean, we're, we have a literal cyber Nazi march going on. And now, all of a sudden, we have millions of Daleks that can fly and are stronger than the Cybermen. <sighs> that... I honestly wish they had uh, had more of that in the episode because just, just as a viewer, that was a phenomenal sight. It was just like, oh my god, the entire world is literally doomed. Like it, within a span of minutes, the whole planet would just be gone from the Daleks alone. <laughs> oh, that was like I said, that was just a great aspect of this episode. Probably one of my favorite parts of the episode overall. That was a noise upstairs. Now the eighth best thing about these episodes is the vortex and just that entire segment. It was really cool to see all the Cybermen and the Daleks being sucked up into the into the vortex. In that that moment with Rose and the Doctor, I, I'm gonna give my full feelings on that a little bit later, but oh, that was just such a crazy crazy segment which brings me to the final I say one of the best parts of the episode but is very sad and that is the goodbye and any of you that have watched the show watched the episode know exactly what I'm talking about so well done so beautiful and so so friggin sad just so sad and yeah, uh, like I said, you're going you're gonna to hear my full feelings on that very shortly. But uh, first, let's get into some of the issues I had with this episode. And there are very few. There's two, but you know, they're, they're mostly fairly minor. The first one is actually that I feel they shouldn't have revealed the Cybermen too soon. And what I mean by that is when the people sort of go back into that construction area, or the people with Torch would go back to that little construction area, and they just kind of, all of a sudden you see the Cybermen's face. Now, if you weren't paying attention, you might not have caught that, but it just, it kind of ruins the mystery of what the ghosts could be, or at least it did for me, unfortunately. So it kind of took a little bit, some, it took that mystery away, which I thought was pretty interesting at first. But yeah, like I said, that's just a bit of a problem for me. Now the second problem that I had with this episode was that I felt that the intro for both episodes was kind of unnecessary. Like it was good in the first episode, but then in the second it just kind of rehashed what she said in the first episode's intro with a few differences and then basically said the same thing, this is how I die, or some, yeah, I think that's right. I just felt that was kind of unnecessary, but again, that's just my personal taste. And now to get into uh, what I feel were two of the best quotes from these two episodes, both of which actually come from the final episode, Doomsday. The first is actually during one of the interactions between the Daleks and the Cybermen. And they're going back and forth, back and forth, identify yourself! Identify yourself! Identify! And it's just back and forth with that until finally uh, uh, what was the quote? <laughs> the Dalek says, Daleks do not take orders! <laughs> the Cyberman says, You have identified as Daleks. Oops! <laughs> Just loved, loved that part of it. And the, actually, the final favorite quote of this episode, or really of this season, comes from the Doctor during the goodbye. And it's after uh, his image appears and Rose asks uh, where, he, or where he is. And he says, I'm inside the TARDIS. There's one tiny little gap in the universe left, just about to close, and it takes a lot of power to send this projection. I'm in orbit around a supernova. I'm burning up a sun just to say goodbye. And that that was just beautiful to me. Just the idea 
of, even though he doesn't get to say it in the end, it shows how much he cared and how much he loved Rose. Is that he is going, he went through all that trouble and, and he's at that point burning up a supernova, burning up a sun just so he can say goodbye to her because that's the last time they're going to get to see each other. At least as far as I know. But yeah. All right, so um, now that we are through with that part, I'm going to give you my overall feelings of this episode, which was previously recorded, as I had mentioned before. So, me from the past, take it away. Okay, I'm going to be recording my thoughts on these two episodes um, right after watching it, and I'll just edit it in after, you know, me doing my favorite parts of the episode and the problems and all that crap. Start off with, the episodes were actually pretty darn good. I will say that. They were probably... I would say these two episodes as a whole were probably some of the absolute best episodes I have seen of this show so far. There was, te uh, it was pretty friggin' terrifying with the Daleks versus the Cybermen, the, uh, the human race basically being uh, essentially enslaved, more of that horrifying idea of people being chopped up and turned into Cybermen. That was terrifying. And, I mean, just, the graphics overall, it's like, you know, even though, as usual, they aren't that great, you know, the ghost figures looked like the, the way they looked was just awesome. And just all of the characters, all of the characters, even Jackie, I know that I've, you know, talked about Jackie not liking her too much before, but my god, all of them did really good. They managed to get so many characters in, so many characters had good moments. And Mickey making his surprise return. I was so happy to see that. But that ending, I won't lie. The first when I first started this show, I liked Rose. And as the time went on, I really grew to like her a lot as a character. And you know, I grew to care for her and for the doctor, of course. And that ending! I'm not gonna lie, I teared up. That was one of the most heart-wrenching things I have seen in a TV show in a long time. And there are some intensely sad moments. It's like, you know, if, I, if I'm really into a show and a particular character dies, you know, I get emotional about that kind of stuff. But, you know, I was confused because, like, it, at the beginning of both episodes, Rose is talking about how this is how she died. And, you know, the reveal was like, you know, of how she died, you know, that, that made sense. But then we talk, her, her not dying is actually somewhat worse in a way. <sighs> I, I, I know I'm getting really worked up about this, but like I said, I literally just finished watching both episodes. And, oh God. The very end of it, admittedly, had me going, what? Because it's immediately after this traumatizing, if, if you're really into this show, this very traumatizing moment, this very sad moment. Oh, and my, and my god, it's... I, I just, I don't even know how to properly put it into words, but... For the writer who at the beginning, when I first started writing, when I first started watching this show, the writer Russell T. Davies, as you know, if you've seen some of the first episodes, I didn't care for any of his episodes. Any of them. And to end with Rose on these final two episodes, being some of the most well-written, some of the best action in the series so far, I, I've done a complete 180 on the man. He's very good. He's definitely adapted to, or made the show into a great thing. I really enjoyed the first season. The second one has been phenomenal. And these were two great episodes. There's no denying that. Two great episodes. And I'm mad because of just how gut-wrenching that ending was. And it's a sign of a good TV show, honestly, in my opinion, if it can get you so invested in 
just a character, not even really the central character. One of them, for sure, in these past two seasons. But to get you so invested in a character who is essentially the co-star that <laughs> I get this angry at that ending. Maybe not so much angry, just upset. And I know that the show has to go on. I know that there are other companions that are just as good. Well, I guess it depends on your opinion. I guess I'll find out as I go along. But there will be other companions, all that bring their own dynamics to the show. But Rose was my first Doctor Who companion, just like Christopher Eccleston was my first Doctor. And I guess, you know, no matter what, I'll always have that with the show, really. Um, just like I compare uh, D uh, David Tennant to Christopher Eccleston, I'll compare uh, uh, the companions that come to uh, Rose or Billy Piper, the girl that, or the woman that played her. And yeah, I'm just gonna end it that, and I'll cut back into the footage that. I'll be filming after this when I've had time to write things down and really think things through. But to repeat myself one more time, two great episodes just really upset me with how things had to go down. Alright everyone, and that brings us to the end of Season 2 of Doctor Who, or Series 2, however you prefer it to be said. Now, the next episode will actually be the season recap of Season 2, and I hope to have that out early next week. Uh, we'll see what happens, but hopefully it will be out no later than Wednesday. And until next time, everyone, I'm Papa Ken, and I will see you next time on the next Discovering Doctor Who.